I'm here with Doug, the owner of Affordable Automotive in Murrieta, California. Doug, how are you doing today? Doing really well, thanks. So we've tried to do this or shoot this video a couple times and whatever the case right. may be, I can't make it, you can't make it. Yeah. But thanks for meeting me on this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, right on. Really, really appreciate it. We just want to go through some of the, um, I don't, I, I don't want to say hot topics, some of the, some of the key topics right. that we're facing at the end of 2022, going into 2023. How long have you owned this place? So we're, we're approaching 15 years nice. here. I bought the shop in 2007. Um, so if we do the math, you know, we're getting close to the, to the 15 year mark. So it's been, it's been wonderful. It really has been. But before this, you were in San Clemente with yep. your dad. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Came from the gas station uh, business over in Orange County uh, with my dad and brother. Yeah. Uh, we owned a couple of gas stations. So he's, in he's been in it for a long, long time. I don't know. We're sitting here at the end of 20, 2022. Right. And inflation is sky high. Sure is. Milk costs, what, 16 bucks a gallon? Right, right. Bread yeah. is like seven bucks. Yeah, it's gotten crazy, that's for sure. Ha have you seen it affect auto repair or the industry as a whole? Yeah, I have actually. Um, so, you know, positively and negatively, obviously anytime you have inflation that goes up, then people watch their spending. So that yeah. can affect businesses like ours, but also <clears throat> when gas prices and new car the new car shortage, people are tending to hang on to their cars a little bit more. And that's really our niche. That is really our niche is helping people maintain and keep the cars that they already have. How old are you, are you seeing cars? Well, so, so, I mean, I think, you know, eight to 10 years was kind of the, the norm before, but we, we see cars, everything from just one to two years old, you know, all the way back to, we stay from 1996 and up. So we don't work on anything older than 96. Okay. That's kind of where so we draw the line. You want OBD2 cars? Yes. And, and that just helps us be able to diagnose them properly without getting yeah. into project type stuff on the older cars. Now we do bend that rule a little bit. We have a lot of customers who have older Toyota trucks, who have you know the car or truck that they've kept in the family for a long time. So we're always as amicable about that as we can be. Yeah, right. So obviously the smaller stuff, you know, from, from one to three or $400, that traditionally gets approved, you know, and they do that pretty quickly. Yeah. When you start getting into the higher bills and larger components, that takes a little time. But there has been such strides in what we do with, um, you know, doing our inspections on tablets. We can text, we can email, we can do so many things now that we couldn't do before. We can supply the customer with amazing information to make really good decisions quickly, very yeah. quickly. So, um, you know, we always, take the time, and this is why I've always hired service advisors that have some knowledge and some time, we always discuss these issues, right? Are you going to keep the car? Are you not? Is it an investment in the car? Or is it something you're going to get rid of, you know, soon? And, and you're, we, you're talking to the customers about these issues. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So what we try to do is we try to discuss <coughs> with them um, where, where we would advise them to make the decision. You know, if it's a car that's going to take you know several thousand dollars and it's not a car that you're going to keep well mm -hmm. then maybe we'd make a different decision at that time but i take pride in my staff to speak to the customers as if it was like our own family we okay. we try to make decisions with people's cars as if they were our own you know rather than just pushing it to make the sale <laughs> i guess what i'm saying is here at affordable auto not to be like the sales guy we, we don't want to just get the sale. We really want to make sure that what we're doing for people's cars is really what the cars need. Yeah, and just, I'll put a link down in the description below, but just look at their reviews. Right, it yeah, It speaks absolutely. for itself, you know. He, Doug didn't pay all those people to put good reviews up. No. How fast do you see decisions being made? Like if you call the customer up, and I'm just, I'm saying as, like an, as an average, not like your best customer, your worst customer. If you said, oh, it's going to need a new transmission that's 2,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that decision made pretty quickly or is it, are they saying yeah. a timeout? And I, and I only bring the fact up of like a $2,500 transmission because as, as the, well, I, I guess you could say as new cars trickle in because mm -hmm. of the chip shortage and there still is a chip shortage. There is. Usually that $2,500 would be like, oh, let's just go make a down payment on a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. Let's not throw any more money into this old thing. Right. And with cars being scarce, new cars being scarce, and I, I don't know if used vehicles are still they are sky high. They are. But that $2,500 is like, well, do we go make a down payment on a car that we can't even get, or do we just put it into this old reliable one that we know all the history on right now and just pull the trigger on the transmission? So yeah. that's how I was thinking. People no, might, right. be, might be pulling the trigger quicker they are. than before. They are. I mean, the, 
the, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we're starting to see people hold on to their cars. Oh. You know, as, as the car shortage s slows up a little bit, used cars are coming down a little bit, but still, it's like you said, it's, it's the car they know with the history that they know, yeah. rather than the gamble of getting something that they don't know. Not only with electric vehicles, but the technology around them actually changes quite a bit too, Doug. It does. Um, you have lane departure systems, you have radar coming on these vehicles. Right. What do you see as, I don't, I don't want to say problems, some of the challenges a shop may face when they're dealing with these new cars or trying to fix them? Yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you something, it's a great question. And, and it comes sometimes right from a simple form, like for instance, um, we, we wouldn't do them here, but like windshields, we'd sublet them out to a windshield company, mm -hmm. but now the mirrors have the lane departure, collision avoidance, they're built into the mirror. So those mirrors have to come off and go back on a cracked windshield. So something now is as simple as a cracked windshield can upset the lane departure and all that. So you have to start investing in equipment to recalibrate and certify that stuff because it's kind of like the backup camera, right? No. The, now that they have the backup camera, they're looking over your shoulder, nobody does it anymore, right? So if you have lane departure, and collision avoidance and that kind of stuff, people rely on it. So therefore it has to work. And once you change, um, sometimes you have to pull bumpers off to get to radiators. Uh, again, the, the mirrors have the cameras in them. So we've had to start to invest and heavily invest in the equipment to continue to do just our basic work, brakes, front end, suspension, to, to do that stuff. So we've had to spend some, some serious money on investing in alignment machines that are compatible with collision avoidance. Um, the new refrigerant in about 2018, 2019, they switched refrigerants to a new stuff called R1234YF. Mm -hmm. So now you have to have a new machine that services that. Um, I happen to have a couple of big fleets that have nothing but new cars and you wouldn't think that they would need air conditioning, but things happen. Uh, rocks hit, condensers, um, all Spikes. kinds of stuff happen, right? right? So therefore we had to do, this year we had to invest pretty heavily into equipment to meet the demands of some of the newer cars. And that's probably just gonna be even more so. It is. As time goes, you know, as we go forward in time and cars, I don't, I don't know, do you need special equipment for a Tesla? I don't know. Well, at this point we haven't jumped into the full electric game. At this point we do hybrid stuff, primarily Toyota hybrids because they're pretty straightforward. So that's kind of where we're getting our feet wet into the hybrid electric world is in the Toyota stuff. The Priuses. The Priuses, the Highlanders, the Camry. a lot of the Camrys, they, they are hybrid. So we're doing the hybrid batteries on those and we're doing the hybrid pumps, the cooling stuff. Who do you use for the hybrid batteries? Those. Well at this point there's a couple of places. There's a, there's a guy up in um, Anaheim, I believe, called Electron Automotive. Yeah. Um, we could put a link in there for him. <laughs> yeah, we, a, I, right. I did videos with him. Um, right. With Chris. Yeah, Chris, I can't remember. His yeah, great guy. Um, so they're very, if you look on their website, I believe it's Electron Automotive. Yeah, right? it's Electron right? Automotive. If you look on their website, you'll see the batteries. So we'll buy batteries from them. Chris Nosalek. Right. Some That's of the, his name. Yep, some of the Toyota ones we will uh, just buy directly from Toyota and you know put them in from there the parts stores do sell them um napa sells them O'Reilly yeah, sells them. Dorm, that's a dormant product well it depends i mean they're i think standard makes them there's a few different places nevertheless we try to buy the best we can and offer good warranties on on that stuff now hybrid is not our our main focus at this point but you know obviously we have to move in that direction right and i would stay with chris i would stay with electron electron automotive just because the way he I've seen his setup and the system that he uses to actually recondition that battery yep. are amazing. Yeah, I agree. I've had the privilege of spending some time with him. They actually came down to the shop, um, he and his service advisor, and we spent a lot of time together. So um, he's, a, I, he's a smart guy. Big time. He's very smart. So I, I would say so too. I would say definitely if you're looking for a hybrid battery, um, if we don't do it here, then then Chris up there is a, is a great Oh, yeah, Chris. Yeah, I'll put time. links down in the description below to his shop too. Yeah. And all the videos I did with him. But yeah. yeah, Chris is a good guy. You can hit Disneyland Hello, while you're up there. What? You can hit Disneyland while you're up there. <laughs> <laughs> they just raised their prices for tickets. Did they? Yeah, it's about 375 bucks a piece. Yeah. So <laughs> Crazy. everything has gotten expensive. I mean, we've seen the price of auto repair. I mean, I've done my best to try to keep my costs down to not have to raise. We haven't done any price increases on labor rate or anything in some time. So 
we try to keep things pretty affordable here. Well, I appreciate your time. Yeah, very, very Doug, welcome. is great yeah, seeing you. Yeah, thank you so much. Guys, I'll put just, uh, links down in the description below to his shop, all the stuff we've talked about. Um, other, you know, uh, Chris Nosalek shop up in Orange County. Yep. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you can, subscribe, and we will talk to you guys later.